What is going on, everyone? It is February 1st. Happy February, everybody. Um, we've got a weird Thursday slate where four of the five games don't have a line yet. Only one that's legit is uh, Wizards-Raptors. We've got the Grizzlies, who had like 10 dudes not play, including Tyreek, who's not playing tonight. We've got the Pistons, likely having the debut of Blake Griffin. And Willie Reed. Don't want to sleep on Willie Reed. Uh, we don't know about Bledsoe. We don't necessarily know about Chris Paul. Um, it's just going to be a lot of weird stuff going on. So, hope you guys liked the intro. Um, big thanks for that. Uh, I've been meaning to get this running and then realize that I could have been doing it the whole time. And the thing that I needed to do, or the thing that I thought I needed to do, I didn't really have to do. Um, last night went okay. Uh, this is the, no, this is not my history, so. Where is it? So I doubled up in the dime, finished, um, you know, just over the cut line at 313.8. Um, man, I wanted to get to Peyton, I just couldn't figure out how to do it. I, like, I knew, obviously, the Lakers would be a good matchup for him, but not like that. So kudos to the 8% that got Peyton. Um, I was part of the 60 that had Rogier going for, uh, what, 11x? Very happy about that. Um, and then I went Dennis Smith Jr., who, man, I expected a better night, but, you know, if you're going to get beat by Phoenix... Um, I'm just happy you got to 31.8 if the Suns are going to beat you by 14. Um, really, really happy with my transition to Batum. Um, didn't necessarily mean as much for Kaminsky. I was looking to stack both of those guys since they've had some positive correlation in the past. But uh, getting getting Batum at, val at you know well above value is um, makes me happy. Uh, nailed Wade uh, above value. Brandon Ingram is the one that's really weird to me. How does that dude... Like, I, I just expected so much more scoring from him. Against the Magic, terrible D, and then they just go out and lay an egg and get beat by 22. So I guess that probably doesn't help. Um, LeBron underperformed. He was just sort of an artifact of the slate. Uh, there wasn't enough high salary guys out there, and with enough value out, you kind of just ended up on them, or at least I did. Apparently, that wasn't the right play, regardless. 61% of the people agreed with me, though. Um, Kaminsky was perfectly okay. Uh, Portis did exactly what I was expecting. And then, um, you know, you would have liked to see a little bit more out of Embiid. I'm really surprised that they actually lost to Brooklyn. But it's hard to complain too much about you know, that 48-point line. Um, I mean, the main guy you wanted to be on last night, though, outside of Rozier, CJ McCollum, 50 points, like 50 legit points, put up 59 fantasy. So he was the he's the linchpin to get you to places you needed to be. Let's dive in here now. So first up, Pistons and Grizzlies. Um, I didn't copy over the Clippers shooting stats, so, you know, Blake's is going to be wrong, but we're not really worried about it right now um blake is 8700 on FanDuel, 7900 on dk um I, i'm totally cool with having blake tonight it's weird um i don't know what to make of the grizzlies and we'll get to that in a second but they just there's so many guys in and out of their lineup you would think that this is a perfect transition for Blake to be able to just, you know, it's, it's basically like a practice game. It's a scrimmage for Blake Griffin. To be able to play the Grizzlies at home, you know, your home opener for your new team, a team that's in just absolute disarray, you, you couldn't ask for much more. I don't think that I'll be in the minority when I say that uh, I like him as a two. You need him to get to 43 that just feels like unless we hear something different about like his playing time i love it 
I don't think that I'm going to be in the minority, though. I think he's going to be a very, very popular play. Uh, right now, I have the line set at Pistons favored by eight at home. Um, but again, that game and then the three late games all need to be uh, will all need to be adjusted once news comes out because I had to make it all up. Next up is Drummond, uh, 10-2 on FanDuel, uh, 9-4 on DK. So we'd be looking for 50. Uh, obviously had the big one um, two nights ago. He's had two big ones in the past two weeks, multiple 50-point games. Um, I like him as a three. I'm really anxious to see how they play together. After that, I don't see a ton of value out here. Um, Stanley Johnson at 5,200, 5,400 on DK. Um, I just don't trust him. Like, he's... When, when Blake wasn't playing, it was one thing to look at Stanley, but he's not the type of guy that's really going to demand the ball, and bringing in a guy like Blake and a 32% usage rate, you know, I think Stanley's going to go back to being a bit player. So um, I'm, I'm not looking at Stanley. I would look at Ish on DraftKings. I'd say that he's a 3 on DK. And I don't really want any other part of the rest of this. And now here's the weirdest part of it all. We go to the Grizzlies. I have them at a 99 implied total, which would be last. I expect them to be last, regardless of where that line ends up. Um, but, the, I mean, this is just a shot in the dark. I'm assuming that Chalmers is playing and James Ennis is playing. We don't have any news to the contrary on most of these guys. It's like seven guys on the team are questionable. So as news comes out, I'll try to get updates. But, you know, this is going to be uh, my best guess for right now. Marcus Gasol, 8,200, uh, 7,600 on DraftKings. It seems like a situation where I wouldn't want to touch him. Um, he's... Needs 40 and change for value. He did it last night, and he had a 55-pointer a couple nights ago. But otherwise, he's not been there. I'm, I'm not going to focus on him. Um, but I will say that he's at least a 4. It's hard to, you know, with his talent level, it's hard to just disregard him completely. But this team is barely an NBA team. It's basically Marc Gasol and the D-League All-Stars. Jarrell Martin continues to be a decent value. Um, I've got him at 29 minutes, so if that, if anything changes in that regard, um, you know he'll tumble down in a hurry. But he's just a three for me. Same for Andrew Harrison. I'm trying to think. These are some of the guys that I'll that should be playing one way or the other. Um, only other guy I'd really want to look at would be Wayne Selden, and he's just going to be a three. Um, other than that, I think it's uh, difficult. Well, I'll say this. If Chalmers is playing, I would say that Super Nintendo Chalmers can be a 4 on FanDuel. But just don't take any Grizzlies. It's probably your best bet. To the Wiz now. Um, Wizards, 105.5 implied total is 6th. They're 3.5 point underdogs at home against the Raptors. And this line is legit. So we can move forward thinking this information is correct. Um, Bradley Beal, 8,500. You're looking 42. Should probably switch to Memphis. Or <laughs> switch from Memphis. He can get there, but this is a pretty tough matchup um, for him. Not really the best for his shooting profile either. I'd be surprised if I had him. I'm going to assume that there's a shooting guard on the opposite side of this that will look a little bit better, but we shall see. Otto Porter is 7,100, 6,600 on DK, so 35 for Porter. Um, he's, he did that in the last one. Um, and he had another 40-pointer uh, earlier in this two-week stretch. So, again, I would be willing to, you know, put him at a three, but 
Nothing's really looking amazing for the Wizards tonight. Um, I would look at Markeith Morris, though. 5,700, his minutes have been up. If he's going to be playing over 30 minutes, I've got him at 30 on the dot, but played 37 in the last one, uh, played 30 and 38 in the two previous. He's been well over 30 in uh, four of his last five, and you only really need him to get to 29. So, Of all the pieces of this puzzle tonight, uh, Markeith Morris is my favorite wizard. Um... And Kelly Oubre is a four. Just it's like it's hard to get super excited about some of these guys. They're just they're priced right where they need to be, and you're not gonna make um, you're not gonna make a ton of money just driving directly into a good defensive team like Toronto. Now speaking of the Raptors, uh, Raptors 109 implied total. If all of my lines would hold, the Raptors would have the second highest implied total. And as a road game, keeping that line closer uh, makes me really interested in what we have to look at here. So DeRozan is 8,400 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Uh, I would greatly prefer DeRozan to Bradley Beal. What is DeRozan's history against Washington? I know that they're it's a pretty contentious matchup. Yeah, so he went off pretty well here. Multiple 50-point games in his history. Um, and just not having Wall there changes the way that Beal will play defense too. So that, that'll be that'll be something to keep an eye on. Um, DeRozan's just a three still, um, just because it's so hard for him to fill out that box score with anything other than points. And I can see a couple different people for Toronto getting it tonight. So I'm assuming I would end up with DeRozan. But I can't just say, like, he's an amazing play for me tonight. Now, Lowry, on the other hand, I like a lot. Um, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. So we're looking for 37. Um, he's only done that once in a 50-pointer uh, about a week ago. But I think this could be a really good spot for him to break out. It's a lot different going at... Sadoransky or Tim Frazier compared to John Wall. So, Serge Ibaka is 5,600 on FanDuel and 4,900 on DK. Um, that 4,900 price on DK is kind of crazy. Uh, 28 would be value for Ibaka. He's done it in the last two. Um, I don't love him on FanDuel, so he's a four. If he had been playing even slightly better I think well I mean granted the salary would probably be a little bit higher but you could make a, a case that Abaka should be in the two range for my tiers but he hasn't had any games that like pop off the page if he had one fairly recently where he went for like 35 or 40 I'd feel a little bit better but it seems like he's just not asserting himself enough and then let's take a look at uh, Jonas. Is the last guy I want to look at here. Um, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. So we need just over 30. Uh, he's done that in three of four. A 34-pointer, a 61-pointer, and a 47-pointer. He also had 39 about two weeks ago. Um, so he's been all over the place. Jonas Valanciunas. Get it? He'll be just a three as well. Um, on to Minnesota, which should look the best. 110 implied total, 110.75 implied total. Uh, that would be first on the slate. So Wiggins' salary actually went down. He's now 6,000 flat on, uh, on FanDuel, 6,000 flat on DK as well. Um, so you need 30. Um, didn't have it in the last one, but back-to-back 30-point -back games previously. He had a 31, a 41, and a 35, all of which happened without Butler. But he was still trending upwards even prior to Butler's little injury spell. Um, so I think I would, you know, I highly recommend Wiggins tonight. Um, gets to the line at a good bit. Milwaukee puts people on the line pretty regularly. Um 
can't go full bore two just because of his status on the team. There's too many other, you know, like it could just be a Towns night, but I like all of Minnesota, <laughs> especially if Eric Bledsoe's out. Uh, Jimmy Butler, 8,900 on FanDuel, um, 8,600 on DK, so you're looking 45. Hasn't done it since he came back, but two games in the 40s and a 39er. Um, it's not as if he's just missing an action. Again, just a three, though. It's hard for me to get super crazy so far. Then Towns. Now, Towns should just eat. So should Gibson. Um, ninety three hundred on Fanduel, eighty seven on DK. What's Towns' history against the Bucks? They don't play all that often, I'm sure. I would have thought it could have been better. Um, it's probably not the center I'm going to want. I'm going to say that he's just a four. But Taj, on the other hand. 5,400 on FanDuel and DK. Needs 27. We got 39, 30, 34, 29, 37. And it's, it's really hard to ignore Taj. Um, I almost want to say that he's a 2. I think that Taj is going to be a 2. I think he's going to pop up a lot on the optimizer. Let's check out Milwaukee. Bucks. Um, I have them as a 103.25 implied total, which would be ninth. I'm saying that the Wolves would be 7.5 point favorites at home. So first up is Middleton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. So 37 would be good. Um, he's been playing a lot better lately, multiple 50-point games. He's been at 37, five of his last seven. Uh, I'm in for Middleton, but uh, breaks are pumped a little bit. Giannis, flat 12 on FanDuel is so high. You'd need 60 in that case, 10-4 on DK. Um, I don't know if there's going to be enough value on the slate to be looking to Giannis. So he's a 4 for me on FanDuel. And uh, he's a three for me on DK. That that ten four price is not too shabby. But Brogdon is the guy that you want to pay attention to. Um, I'm assuming that Eric Bledsoe is not playing, um, so Brogdon would be fifty four hundred on Fanduel, fifty three hundred on DK. Uh, you're looking twenty seven. Um, has been missing time recently, but I think this is a. a good rebound spot for, for Brogdon so long as we know that he's healthy um, I don't think there's anything else I'm super interested in Henson in a way looks good uh, 5500 on FanDuel 4900 on DK you need 27 um, always generally in that area I'm going to say that he's just a straight 3 but that 4,900 on DK probably fits pretty well with the ability to use multiple centers. To the Spurs now, I've got them as two-point favorites at home against the Rockets. Um, who knows where that line actually ends up. Somewhere in that area, though. And this would be a 107 implied total. Uh, so Aldridge is 8,900 on FanDuel and 7,700 on DK. What a price gap for someone like him. That's 45, which he has only hit. Well, he hasn't hit since he missed on the 24th. But prior to that, I mean, four out of five. If they played it all this year, I'm sure they have. Didn't have it in December. I'm okay with Aldrich here. So let's say Aldridge is a FanDuel 4, DraftKings 3. And he's pretty close to a 2.
Kyle Anderson, I know he's been playing better as of late. 38 pointer, 38 pointer, 45, 35. You know, that's. He's getting well above value most of the time. I'm still a little nervous just because of his lack of scoring. Only gets 34% of his fantasy points from points themselves. That always scares me. Um, but it's also good for GPPs because if it's a day that he's scoring, you should expect a pretty big night. Um, Pow, 6,400 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK is 32. It's been super steady, but this is a really bad matchup for him. I don't think that he ha could have, like, I wouldn't expect him to have a lot of success against Capella. And I don't know if the speed of this game is going to be too much for him. What happened in the previous game? Yeah, so only played 17 minutes in a start. Um, couldn't really get it going, so I'm going to ignore Pau. Um, I think you'll probably see a lot more Aldridge, and uh, Bertans could be someone that looks a little bit better in a GPP scenario. Not somebody I'm going to focus on, but just if you're trying to go through this game in like a game flow kind of way. Not a ton of value out here. I don't really want Murray, although he might get a lot of run trying to hang with Chris Paul if he plays, so I will say that's a three. Let's check out Houston now. Not a ton to like so far. It's kind of a bummer. Um, so Harden is 11-5 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DK, as we all know. Uh, his most recent game was a 98.5 on FanDuel, 100 and change game on DK. Played 46 minutes. Um, you know, Eric Gordon got hurt. No Chris Paul. I assume they're both in tonight. Harden's a three for me. I Again, with the lack of value that I'm seeing out there, I don't expect to have... I think it's going to be hard for me to get to Harden or Giannis. I think Blake will probably be like the the high range for me. Um, Chris Paul is 9,700. You need you need 50. Um, coming off the injury against the Spurs, a great defensive team. I'm, I'm just not even going to look at him. I'm, I'm not interested. Eric Gordon is 5,400 on FanDuel. Uh, if he can play, I, I like him at that price. But the one guy that I really want to pay attention to, and I need to look and see how much he played the last time. He got 25 minutes. So okay, it's nothing crazy. Has played well against them in the past. San Antonio, not exactly spectacular against centers. Um, I like Clint Capella tonight. 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. So you need 33. Um, Capella with 41 in the last one. He's at another 41, some 39s. Um, he's more like a two and a half for me. That's probably it. Last game on the slate, the Denver Nuggets hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Again, no line. I've got the Nuggets favored by three at home. Um, there's some interesting stuff for the Nuggets, particularly on DK. So Gary Harris is 6,600 on FanDuel. He's 5,800 on DraftKings. 33 would hit value. Um, he's sort of all around that lately. I don't love the idea of Gary Harris, but Denver is a very um, interesting DraftKings team. So Gary Harris is going to be a three on DK. Then we go to Will Barton, also 6,600 on FanDuel, but 5,500 on DK. So 33 is the value mark for FanDuel. Um, he's been a little bit steadier, I think, than uh, Harris has been lately, but he is in the exact same scenario. But he needs 33 to hit 6x on DK, which he's done three times in his last eight. So I'm going to give the same sort of shout-out for Barton, fours and threes. But Barton is a little bit closer 
to a two on DraftKings. Now Jokic, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK, which is just ludicrous. He's just under 50. Uh, not the best game in his most recent one, but he's been in the mid to high fours, 40s uh, quite a few times. He's going to be a 3 for me on FanDuel and a 2 for me on DK. That price is just insane. Um, for a guy that can go to as high of a place as Jokic in a given night, uh, 8100 is a just a really insane price point for him. Um, I would be fine with Jamal Murray on DraftKings as a 3. He is 5700 there. Um, I'm, I don't want any part of Wilson Chandler. And I think that Trey Lyles is pretty well priced at this point. <clears throat> so I'm going to say that he's just a straight three. There's not a ton of extra value in him. But, you know, his floor spacing will fit pretty well in this game. And then finally, your Oklahoma City Thunder in Denver. Three-point underdogs by my watch. We've got Russ at 12-3, 11-3 on DK. It's another, I, I just can't imagine getting to him, particularly in Denver, where, you know, altitude can get you. I mean, I, I know that Russ has like an unlimited gas tank, but I'm going to say that Russ is just a four. I can't get too crazy. It's... Like 60 would just be a ton in this case. I just don't know if I'll have the salary to get there, but I think he's going to pop up on the optimizer a little bit, and more than a little bit, actually. Paul George, 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Need 40. He's done that. One, two, three, four, five out of his last eight. I have the hiccups. Um, George looks good. Uh, this is a really good matchup for Paul George. I don't think there's anybody that can really deal with his style on the opposite end of the spectrum. So I think George will probably be a focus of mine at small forward. Steven Adams is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. So to get to 35, which he's done in his last two, he's been over 30. Oh, my God. So Steven Adams' last eight games. 35, 35, 30, 32, 30, 40, 34 and a half, 34. That is about as steady as it gets. Put him in as a three. Feels super safe. And then finally, Mello. Uh, 6,200 on DraftKings. Nope. 6,200 on FanDuel. 5,800 on DraftKings. I don't know why I'm typing Oklahoma City in there like I'm starting over. Mello needs 30. He's done it one, two, three, four, five times in his last eight. Um, again, just a three. But I'm going to want some some bite at Oklahoma City. I don't know. I would expect, expect it to be Paul George. I can't talk today. I have two-thirds of a coffee left. Need to get that in my system get the blood flowing so that's the short list for now um i think this is a really tough five game slate um not going live tonight just fyi um on these little slates i don't see the value in it as much and it gives me a chance to just be a normal human being when i get home instead of just rushing to uh get everything together and get online immediately so we'll be back live tomorrow but for now we can check out the normal stuff. Still feel free to hit me up with any questions, Twitter, in the comments, on Reddit. I will be around. All right, what do we got? Yeah, tons of Russ, as expected. Tons of Jimmy Butler, which I did not expect. At least not to that degree. Okay. 
Tons of Russ and tons of Jimmy Butler. That's crazy. So Blake, Taj. Blake and Taj are my two keys of power forward. How does that shake out? Blake is first, Taj is third. So I think that'll be the best place to start. And if I do that, I could almost guarantee Russ. I wouldn't want Teague. I think I would want Kyle Lowry. But if I take Lowry, I'm almost assuredly getting Teague unless I go Harrison. Lowry, Harrison, Beal, Brogdon, Johnson, Chandler, Grid. No, that one's not happening. So Lowry might be impossible. But I don't really have many other options. So if I go Russ, like it's telling me to do, really wants me to go Sterling Brown, which also not going to happen. That's a little bit more palatable. Don't really want to go to Gortat, though. <laughs> so center is telling me pow, which I'm not going to do. And then it's basically Capella, Valanciunas. I think I would go Capella in this case. So that's Russ, DeLon Wright, Brogdon, Sterling, Brat Selec. There's just... It's missing that one piece of news. And we might get that through news from Memphis. You know, the Grizzlies game's at 7, so we should know exactly what's going on with the Grizzlies. We should know exactly what's going on with the Pistons, so that'll help a little bit. But right now, it's tough sledding. Now, DK is going to look so much different, because when I dump this in here, it's going to be like a slot machine going off grabbing um, nuggets guys with all the value that was out there but right now FanDuel super tight okay DraftKings random close 50 mine boom there it is Barton Jokic Gary Harris tumbling. Jamal Murray is there. So let's close this so I can get a better look at my DK shit. And let's bump up tiers. Jokic, Blake, and Taj are my three favorites there. So Jokic is here. Blake is here. Taj a little bit further down. So let's grab Jokic first, then Blake, then Taj. And we get three lineups. Any of these look like something I would want to do. Um, Ish, Gary Harris, Barton, Griffin, Adams, T, Gibson, Jokic, I think would be interesting. I think this one's interesting as well. I don't necessarily love the idea of going um, three nuggets into Oklahoma City, but I think I might just play on DraftKings tonight. Do one lineup in the dime to keep the single entry series going and then play a little bit on DK. I think that'll be my, my goal tonight. So, yeah, um, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed the intro. I'm really appreciative for that now that I know what I'm doing. I hope that all came off okay. Um, slowly but surely going to up the production value of this joint. <laughs> Had to happen eventually. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in um so you know you guys know the drill like and subscribe uh check out reddit follow me on twitter check out my patreon if you are supporting this um paypal if that's more your deal and um won't be back tonight for live tonight's gonna be my night off um but i will be around before lock so if you have any questions please feel free to ask and uh best of luck tonight Bye bye